My name is Richard Mylan and I'm uh, an actor, a writer, a director, a tutor. My name is Steve Balsamo. I'm a singer and a songwriter. My name is Christian Patterson and I'm an actor, director and writer. My name is Michelle McTernan. I'm an actress. I've worked in TV, film, theatre, radio. I've done voiceovers for CBeebies. Basically, I'll say yes to anything, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Swansea means home. I think probably the first thing that comes to mind is home. Home. It means I'm coming home. Wherever I've been in the world, and I've been many, many places, I've been very lucky like that, I've always loved that last day, wherever I am, thinking, I'm going home. When I hear the word Swansea, I think possibilities. And I mean that in the purest sense. The Grand Theatre. I used to see the Grand Theatre every day on the way to school. Ah, this beautiful old girl. <laughs> the Grand Theatre is such an icon of a building. I met my wife on the stage here, uh, which changed my life. Um, and it was here that I decided to want to be an actor, so it, it made my life. And I remember coming for the first time when I was about 11. I found a wallet on the way to school, and when I took it in, giving it to my form tutor, and I got a call from the headmaster a couple of hours later and it belonged to the actor Melvin Hayes, who was performing in Babes in the Wood in Swansea. So my first encounter with the theater inside was being invited by Melvin to come and watch Babes in the Wood. When I was younger, I can remember being about 11 years old and there was a girl in our school who, who was in the Swansea Panto. And I just, I adored her. In fact, when I, when I was asked, what should I want to be when I grew up, I wanted to be her. And, um, and so I, I found the manager's name in the book, Mr. Gary Isles, and I wrote to him asking, could I be in the panto? Of course, he never got back to, be, to me, but my dream was to, to work at this amazing building, and, and many years later, I did. And, and I pinched myself at that thought of actually stepping on that stage and working professionally and getting paid. My nana, Connie, she used to have a cafe where the, the, the ground just, you know, before it looked how it looks today, it used to just have the, the sort of central part of the building that you can still see from the car park embedded in the new build. But then on the side of it was terraced houses. And on one end was Nana's, my Nana's cafe and it was called Connie's Cafe. And it was typical Greasy Spoon. And I used to go there every weekend with my mum and my sister. My mum used to help out. And all over the world, walls were these... Um, signed photos of the acts that have played here in, in the kind of golden era of theatre. And I guess that's where my fascination for theatre started. If there was a theatre, um, and I don't want this to happen necessarily, but if there was a theatre where I was going to do a Sid James, who sadly passed away on the stage in Sunderland, or Tommy Cooper, who passed away in uh, His Majesty's in London, then the Grand Theatre would be the stage for me. I'd gladly conk out on that stage. <laughs> 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 to be ambitious is to dream, and I'm a big dreamer. And to be ambitious is to create magic, is to, is to tap into that bit of yourself that, that you know has endless possibilities. The word ambition is a desire to be better than what you are. Ambition for me is the desire to do something, to change something, to make something happen. Trying to leave a mark, trying to do something that will be here when we are gone, because we're only here for a very, very short time. Oh.